I want an apropos message from Apostle Eckhart to set the stage and the platform and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Because tonight, the religious spirit over this region is being served. Notice that your kingdom is being dismantled and you're being dethroned by the power of God. By the revelation that has been released here tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Apostle Lecker, would you like to say something, please? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, the atmosphere here is charged by the power of God. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. As we do this tonight, I want you to just release your faith with us. And add your blessing to what is taking place. And bless the work of the Holy Spirit in this place. And bless the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of these three women of God. Amen. There were some little glitches and, and opposition to this meeting taking place, including even a venue location. The enemy did not want this meeting to take place. The enemy did not want what was going to challenge him and his principality over this region. Because he knew that the revelation that would be released here tonight and what would take place even in this ordination was going to be a powerful, powerful signal that his come, kingdom is coming down. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. In pre proven ministry, they already have the fruit of apostleship. Many are calling them and seeing them as apostles already because of what they have imparted and taught into, into, into the lives of many others, into the lives of churches, and so forth. So, we're here tonight recognizing what heaven has decided on, and we're here tonight to be able to release and ordain and commission these women into the, into the ministry of apostle and release them on their journey in this next season of their life, hallelujah, to tear up the devil's kingdom and advance the kingdom of God and release a whole new breed and company of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in the earth and raise a new breed, new generation, apostolic culture, moral churches, hallelujah, that will be cities set upon a hill. something here tonight, man of God. Hallelujah. Karen Bennis Davis. Tonight we recognize what heaven has recognized. We partner with heaven tonight. Come on, see the nation. To recognize your apostleship. Your apostleship to the nation. Your apostleship to not only America, not only to Fredericksburg, but your apostleship to the nations. Father God, we thank you for Karen Bennis Davis. We thank you, Father God, that you, hallelujah, have decided in your divine counsel, in your wisdom, hallelujah, you have decided that she is to be an apostle in the earth, in this generation, Father. Lord, that, that you would advance through her giftings and callings and all that you would put inside her, Father. The kingdom of God powerfully to raise up a new generation. And Father God, Apostle John Edgar and I, as apostles of, of, of God, we release, hallelujah, we release Karen into her apostleship. And we ordain and commission her as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Already invested in us. Not only does the anointing come upon you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet now in this commissioning. Ah, but there is a fire that is ignited inside of you, says the Spirit of the Lord. There is a fire. Oh, there is a lion that's about to be released inside of you that is about to roar to this generation for there has been a roar pent up on the inside of you that you have been waiting for the time and the platform and the season to release that roar of revelation that will awaken a generation that will awaken 
entering tonight into that season, says the spirit of a living God. God says you've been on a journey, and now you come to the place of release and the place of honor, says the Lord, and because you've been faithful to that which I led you on years ago. The Lord said, now you're about to step into a new realm, a new a new season of, of success and fruitfulness, says the Lord. And I'll give you to train many and release many and be a catalyst for many women in the days to come. For you and women will see what you're doing and they'll be motivated to step into their calling. The Lord said, I've called you not only to the nation, but I've called you to women to liberate them, to free them from the restraints of religion and tradition and show them how to step out and step into that. And you're teach, instruct, you'll depart, you'll upgrade into the life. So get ready, daughter. The journey is continuing. I'm going to keep taking you on another place, another level, another journey, says God. I've laid the foundation. Now step into it. It's a new season. It's a new release. And now, through the laying on of hands and through the prophetic word, I release you to the next season of your destiny and the next season of your course. It's on you. It's in you. The passion, the fire, the burning, the zeal. I put it there. And you'll impart that zeal unto many, and you raise up burning ones, you raise up those with fire and passion to evangelize, to win the lost, to prophesy, you raise them up, says God, when they get around you, they'll be ignited, so ignite them, and stir them up, and send them forth, and I'll bless you, and I'll prosper you even more, and more, and more in the days to come. Apostolic fire, and apostolic revival is your portion. Apostolic revival is your portion. Apostolic revival is your portion. And I heard the Lord say, I'm going to open up doors of television for her. She's going to find herself on programs, preaching and in interview situations. And she's going to release the word of the Lord. The Lord says, get ready, get ready, get ready. Those doors of opportunity are opening. I'm going to show you which ones to walk through because I'm going to give you favor. And your voice is about to be found. People are going to begin to seek you out, and you're about to be found. You're about to be discovered in a fresh and a new way by those looking for fresh voices. For fresh voices. For fresh voices. And you'll be one that will model what does it mean to be an apostolic woman, a woman apostle. What does it mean to model it in a marriage? What does it mean to model it in her femininity? What does it mean to model it? As a woman of God, what does it mean to model it in a place that it does not go off into extremes, but no model it in a place, says the Lord, that I have called it to be. I'm going to raise you up to be that model, says the Spirit of the Lord. Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we send her in to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as an apostle. I've preserved you on the streets of Detroit even for such a time as this. Even when the enemy on the streets and also your spiritual enemies would have tried to take you out and have tried to assassinate you and assassinate your character and assassinate your reputation and tried to assassinate you in so many ways physically and in the natural and in the spiritual, says the Lord. But I have preserved you and I have protected you for such a time as this, says the Lord. For I have brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. I have preserved you for such a time as this, says the Spirit of the living God. And I have caused your journey to be one that, yes, you've had very difficult things that you have passed through. Times where you didn't even 
know whether you would make it to the next place, but I have been with you, and I have been with you all the way, even as I was with Joseph, even when he was sold out by his family, by his brethren, I was with you even as I was with Joseph, even when they threw him in a pit to be auctioned, ah, to be sold to slavers, ah, I was with him in the pit, even when he was sold in the Potiphar's house. I was with him in that situation. And he grew, even in every negative situation that he was in. He grew. His leadership grew. His anointing grew. He grew in the knowledge and wisdom of his destiny, in the revelation of his destiny. And then if that was not worse, he was put into the prison. And even betrayal in the prison. But then came the Kairos moment. An opportunity to be presented before Pharaoh, the king. This is the time that I prepared you for. Because even in the prison, I was with Joseph. And even in the prison, he did not allow his gifts and his talents and his leadership potential to be stifled because of his severe challenges and negative challenges and all the discouragement that he could have yielded to. But no, he stood strong even in the prison, in the darkness of that prison. He stood strong so that he could stand before Pharaoh strong. And I have prepared you, says the Lord, to stand before the Pharaoh of this age. And to stand strong and to pull his kingdom down. And I'm raising you up, says the Spirit of the Lord. And yes, I'm raising you one up, one that will be in Egypt, but not of Egypt. I'm raising you up to understand Egypt, but not to be of Egypt. For I'm sending you on a rescue mission to rescue many out of Egypt, many out of Egypt, many out of Egypt, many out of Egypt, not only from the streets of Egypt, but even from the highest positions of levels of Egypt and you will rescue them says the spirit of the Lord for I will send you forth like a light and you will shine in the midst of the darkness so arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you and I will bring you before kings and mighty people and your light will shine and your light will shine in the darkest place and you will rescue many out for now your authority increases this night forth, and from this night forth, honor is placed upon you, greater wisdom is released through you, and even from tonight, a greater blueprint of what you will build, and what this will look like begins to form, and you will begin to see the picture like never before, and you will run with wild abandonment, and many, many, many will run with you. For I have prepared a crew to run with you that you've not even met yet. And I'm causing a gathering anointing to come upon you. And that crew will begin to gather to you. And you will disciple them. And you will deliver them. And you will heal them. And you will restore them. And you will set them in place in ministry. Even as tonight you are being set in place in ministry. The Lord says you'll raise up the teams and you'll train and you'll activate and you're releasing, you're traveling, you're going to different places, you'll not be limited to one place, says the Lord, but you're right, and your vision shall expand, and your vision shall expand, and you'll reach out and you'll stir up women, even to come out of their hiding places to begin to be the liberators, I'm calling them to be, says the Lord, and you'll raise up another generation of apostolic deliverers and those who believe in miracles and signs and wonders, and you'll be not one just to talk, but you'll be one that will demonstrate my glory and my power and set captives free, says the Lord, but you'll write the books, you'll write the manuals, you'll put it in their hands, they'll have no excuse when they read it, they'll know, they'll not be bound by ignorance and darkness, but you'll break tradition and ignorance of the lives of people, you'll teach them what it means to be a deliverer, what it means to set the captives free, set the Lord, so get ready to raise up the teens, and raise up the women, and raise up the young ones, and raise up the next generation, says God, you'll go after the sons and the daughters, you'll train them, you'll not let them stay in a a place of ignorance and laziness, uh, but you'll stir them up, uh, and you'll say, we've got work to do. So many people need to be set.
saved and healed and delivered and set free. I mean, in a passion, says God, I'm stirring up that gift. It's coming forth, but now it shall come forth apostolically. It shall come forth with a new level. It shall come forth with a new blueprint. It shall come forth with a new strategy. I'll give you a greater grace, says God, to gather, to mobilize, to activate, to send out, to impart, to train. And even though at times it's been frustrating, the Lord said, I'm breaking the frustration and I'm causing a new level of success, a new level of breakthrough. And you're preaching different places and they'll call you and they'll say, come teach us and help us to move in this new thing. We don't understand it. You'll break the fear you are break the religion, you are break the tradition, you are going after the enemy. So receive that impartation tonight and receive that commissioning and that release through the angle of hands and your apostolic release and step into it by faith. And the Lord says, stir up the women and stir up those who want to move in power and miracle. Stir them up and release them, train them and send them forth. You are not only sick, but you will be one that sends others. You will be a sender. You'll be what it means to be a spotter. A sent one, but also a sender. So send them out. Release them. Activate them. And I will bless you and cause you to be successful in your ministry and in your life in the days to come. Yes, yes. Get ready for that apostolic hug to take shape. That apostolic hug to take shape. It will be a training and a sending center. Get ready for it to take shape. It's going to be in the deep shape. It's going to be exceeding abundantly of all you even thought about or asked. It's going to be greater than you even imagined. It's going to be an incredible place to train and send the next generation. On the authority invested in us as apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, we sent you in the church of Jesus Christ as an apostle. An apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go forth and fulfill your commission. Run the race, the wild abandonment that is set before you. Receive the acceleration and the increase and the multiplication that even from this night forth, this condition and this honor placed upon you will initiate in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Ordination, office of the Apostle, Apostle Sonia Green. There are times also in our in our in our lives and our in our ministries, as Bible ministers, that that uh, we have been ordained at a prior time, even even into the office of which we're we're walking in, uh, which is with Apostle Karen the Register Vini. She's been already ordained as an apostle, but she's entering into a whole new season in her life and her journey with the Lord and her ministry. And there are it's appropriate in those times also at times to receive a recommissioning of one's apostleship or other fivefold ministry. And so tonight we are recommissioning her for this next leg of the journey, for this next season in her life, or what God has shown her and is showing her and where he is taking her and what he wants her to do in terms of expanding the kingdom of God through this new place that she is in. Hallelujah. When Jesus breathed on his apostles just before he left, after all that they had been through, twice he said, Peace be upon you. And then he breathed on them. And I believe that breathing upon them was a recommissioning of their apostleship, a recommissioning of their apostleship, a recommission of their apostleship. And tonight, Apostle John Eckhart and I, we recommission you as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
we recommission you in your apostleship and recognize the apostleship that you have been called to from heaven. And we on the earth here, we recognize what Yahweh has decided upon, what the Lord Jesus Christ has decided upon, what the divine council has decided upon in heaven. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, for this next leg of the journey for Karen's life and ministry. And we thank you, Father God, hallelujah, for acceleration in her life. And we thank you, Father God, that, that she is one that will be a bridge to help many come from the old into the new because they can trust her and they've developed a trust relationship with her, but they also see a new authenticity in her as she is stepping into the new and embracing the new and running in the new, running with the new. So, Lord, I thank you that she is a bridge that many will say, take my hand and you will help them across. You will help them across because of that trust relationship. You will help them across. And there is a remnant from the old. There is a remnant from the old. They're saying we're ready. We're tired of religion. We want to come across into the new. Can you help us? And if they come, 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 come. Follow me as I follow Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. And you'll grab their hands. And you'll pull them out of religion. And you'll pull them out of the, the old wine skins. And you'll say, come, drink the new wine. Drink it. Yes, it's different. Yeah, it tastes strange. But drink it. It's good for you. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Yes, it's a time of restructuring, even in your own life. The Lord says, Dara, I'm restructuring some things. I'm reorganizing some things. I'm going to have you begin to do things in a new and a fresh and a different way. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Oh, there may be a few days there, but don't be afraid of it. Because all of what I have put in your heart for your future, the Lord says it's connected fully stepping into the fullness of all the new now that I'm requiring of you and that I've shown you. This is the time. Even as tonight you're receiving this endorsement and this recommissioning of your apostleship, go forth now, for the nations are your inheritance. The nations, Europe, South America, Africa, Asia, the nations are your inheritance. Yeah. Go raise up sons and daughters of the nations yeah. and plant new model apostolic churches and show them the new way of an apostolic kingdom culture that will change and shift and transform nations. Says the Spirit. The Lord says, Don, I'm restoring you and refiring you for the days ahead. The Lord said, you're not moving the old, but you're moving the new. The Lord said, this is a day of a fresh release and a refreshing coming upon you. And there have been times when you've been tired and sometimes frustrated and weary. But the Lord said, I re-strengthen you and I cause a new wind even to come upon you now. A fresh breath of my spirit to come upon you now that you might run the race that is ahead of you. And you'll not break down and you'll not be tired. But this will be the day that you'll run more than you've ever run before. And I'll give you my strength to do the things that you could not do before. So the Lord said, get ready, daughter, with this rescinding. I'm going to send you to new places. I'm going to send you to tough places. I'm going to give you people to minister to and to teach and to raise up. And you'll raise up the teams and you'll strengthen churches and you'll visit churches. And I'll give you a circuit like I gave Elijah. You'll go to Bethel. You'll go to this place. You'll go to another place. You'll go to another place. You'll go to another place. To another place. And as you go, you'll strengthen up. You'll refresh. You'll build up. You'll encourage you. You'll prophesy. You'll teach, says the Lord. I'll give you specific cities and regions to go into. And you'll pour yourself into them. And the Lord said, the more you pour, I'm going to pour it back into you. As you pour out to others, I'm going to refill you and replenish you. And not only shall you go to cities, but you'll go to nations. And you'll go to this nation and that nation and that nation. And you'll make a circuit and you'll revisit and you'll plant and you'll water and you'll plant and you'll water. But I'll give the increase, says God. You'll go back to places where you planted before and you rewater and pour more water in. And I'll give the increase. So plant and water and do my apostolic work, says the Lord, of planting and watering. And I will increase it. I will cause it to grow. And you'll see the fruit of your labor, even the years of sacrifice and the years of diligence. And the Lord said, the places.
places uh, you've been hurt in uh, and rejected in. I'm healing you. I'm mending you. I'm restoring you. I'm making you whole. I'm putting the past behind you and I'm causing you even to move into your future and to be launched into your destiny. You forget the hurts uh, and the frustrations uh, of the past, says the Lord, uh, and you walk in newness of life. Uh, you walk in my power, my forgiving power, my healing power. I'll heal you and restore you and you're not going to your future limping and wounded but to go and hold, says the Lord. And you heal others and restore others and release the oil and the wine into others and release healing and miracles into others as you pray for them. So get ready for a new release of miracles, a new release of healing, a new release of signs and wonders, a new release as I recommission you, I restore you, I refire you, I rescind you, I refresh you, I restore you, I reform you, I recharge you, I do a new work inside of you, said the Lord, through this prophetic word. So let it go deep inside of you and let it release my power in you and go forth and succeed and prosper and see new breakthroughs and new plants and new water and even new growth in the days, the weeks, and the months, and the years to come. We prophesy and we decree it now in Jesus' name. Amen. We just recommission you as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go forth and bear much fruit in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Come on, give it up. Hallelujah. Apostle. Apostle. Recommissioning the office of the apostle. Hallelujah.
say because this little boy who started going to church when he was three. <laughs> what a name, great man. So this is his day too. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to give? Because I'm looking. I just want to know, are you ready to give? Are you ready to sow? Because you 